Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. Today we're going to get into granular synthesis and how we can do it in the grid. Now, granular synthesis is where we take a little piece of audio from a sample and we kind of stream it into a stream. So we can control the size of each grain. Uh, usually they're going to be like maybe 100 milliseconds or around there more or less. And uh, then we basically are going to fade in that um, grain and fade it out. And then we're going to put it into the stream and we can control the timing of the grain. So how many are we going to put into the stream per given interval? And we can control whether we're going to give it regular intervals or if we're going to kind of make irregular grains uh, appear at, at irregular timings. And then we can also spread each individual grain across its uh, across the pan spectrum, left and right and so forth and in between. And then we can change the pitch of each grain. So we have pan, we have pitch, and then we have interval, and then we have the size of the grain. So all these are parameters that are involved with granular synthesis. So in practice, let's look at how this works within VPS Avenger. I have a sample here that sounds like this. <laughs> So in Avenger, sounds like this, and the granular synthesis engine. And what we're doing right here is we have grains that are each 100 milliseconds, and we're playing 100 grains per second, pretty much. So this is layering pretty densely. It's like 10 times layering. So um, if we would decrease it, we can kind of hear each individual grain playing back. So by the time we get past 10 grains, they start to overlap and it sounds more fluid and continuous. But the thing about granular synthesis is that it'll tend to sound very um, repetitive and kind of stuttery if we don't give it some randomization. So within... Um, Within VPS Avenger here, we can vary the position from which we're sampling. So let's turn that up a bit. So already that sounds more fluid than this. And then we can vary the pitch of each grain somewhat. Adds a little bit more depth, and we can depth, not depth, and we can pan each grain across the stereo field. I randomize that, make it stereo. There's some other parameters here, but we're not going to worry about those right now. So it sounds pretty good. Now let's look in the grid and see what we can do in the grid. When we look at the textures mode, which is the granular synthesis mode within the grid, we only basically have these two dials. We have grain, which is the size of the grain, and we have motion, which allows us to add some randomness, randomness to where we're sampling each grain from and the size of each grain. So uh, let's listen to these settings. <laughs> So it sounds pretty normal. Um, it's not really doing anything interesting. So with this, we don't, we can't do density right from this interface here. We can just change grain size, which doesn't have much of an audible effect because we're playing this back at the same speed as the sample. If we play back at a slower rate. Then grain has a lot more of an effect on things. So let's see. So remember, we're going to get kind of that dry, stuttery effect when we're not using any randomization. So this will help that out, the motion. And of course, we can slow down the progression here. 
And granular is kind of the OG form of time stretching and uh, pitch shifting. Um, there's spectral uh, time stretching and pitch shifting available within Clips in Bitwig and in most other um, DAW packages. And that's going to give you uh, uh, usually better results, higher quality results when you're needing to slow things down or speed things up or change the pitch of things. Um, but this works as well, but you tend to get more of an echoey kind of artifact thing going on. And there's things that we can do to minimize that. But textures is, is uh, if you want it to kind of loop a sample and have it sync to the uh, tempo, you would probably want to use uh, textures mode. And in another video, I can get into how to do that. Um, but in this video, we're just going to worry about how to make a, a good kind of patty granular synthesis uh, sound. So while we do have a pretty good sound here, it's not quite as uh, rich and full as what we have here. We have a stereo and it's nice and cloudy and nice. But this is a lot more flat, right? So let's get some stereoness in here. So when we want to kind of have that wide grain uh, gambit across the uh, you know pitch and and um, and pan, we're going to need to use voice stacking. So if you click anywhere in the blank part of the grid, you can get this device uh, parameters here, and we can start doing voice stacking. So when I first just uh, add another voice. There's not a huge difference there because what we're doing is just making another exact copy of this and then playing them both together. When we have two voices, this, there's two copies of this. Now, anything that is randomized within a particular patch will be different in the voice stack because randomization is different for, for every iteration in, in the system. So you can kind of hear a difference between this and this. It's subtle, but it's there. Uh, if we turn motion off, it's exactly the same, just louder. So what we want to do is create some variation between each iteration. So let's turn this back up and we're going to start to modulate between um, voices. So we have two on right now, and we click on the voice stacking spread. So one of the obvious things we want to do is pan left and right. And we're already getting some stereo effect there. Again, if, if we were to turn off the modulation, I mean the motion here, there's no more stereo because each iteration is exactly the same. But now they're different, so we perceive that as a stereo effect. Um, we can also vary the grain size a bit. And vary the pitch a little bit. And then we can even increase the number of stacks and get it denser. So now we have something kind of dense sounding, kind of like what we have here. So that's how you can get a nice, rich, thick, um, granular synthesis sound in the grid. You want to use the voice stacking uh, and use textures mode, of course. Now let's look at some of the other features that are available within uh, the textures mode. We can use the freeze mode here and uh, get some pad-like sound. So we can kind of isolate. Let's say we want to use this part of the sample. I'm going to make it more patty here. Uh, 
And what we can do um, is use the freeze mode and we can scan across the sample. Actually, let's include this part so we get some variety there. We'll bring this in a bit. <laughs> And we can control kind of variation in the sound. We can modulate this position knob here and get some cool variation. Now, if we turn off the motion here, the sounds a lot more static, but what we can do is actually use modulation to control where we are in the sample as opposed to using the motion. And that gives us a bit more flexibility. So let's bring in a random modulator. And I'm going to turn it to Hertz, turn this up, turn this to continuous. And then we're going to assign it to position, give it a pretty big space there. So now we're basically sampling grains from all over this region of the sample. Let me turn off the stack so you can kind of hear really well what's happening. So with this, we actually are getting a different sample position for each grain um, because it's going to sample from the position that it that the uh, the playhead is whenever it's it decides to sample so it's not smearing things or changing things each individual grain is a little bit different uh, and we can hear that if we make huge grains so we can control how much variation we're getting by turning the amplitude here up and down And since each one of the iterations when we use stacking mode would be different, we just get this kind of a big wash of sound when we turn this back up. We can tighten it up and So that pretty much gives you all the features that you might be looking for. Um, we can control the grain size, we can control motion, we can control density to a certain level. Now, having five stacks isn't quite as dense as what we can get in an Avenger here because we can really stack it up so high. Um, so we can get a really dense, rich thing happening here. But there is something about the Avenger, I'm sorry, with the sound that we can get out of the grid. That sounds richer. And one of the reasons that is, is because this is dealing with this stereo sample still in stereo. So in Avenger here, it's processing the stereo file as mono. And then you can add stereo by randomizing the grains. So it can't really do the grains in stereo, whereas in Avenger here, I'm sorry, in um, the grid is actually processing 
each individual grain in stereo as far as I can tell. So anyway, that there's so many different ways that you can do granular. So different granular synthesis will give you slightly different sounds. So that pretty much wraps up my video about granular synthesis. Uh, I might do in the future how you can do kind of a manual form of granular synthesis in the grid. Uh, as well as how to do um, like loop beats so that you can sync beats up in the grid and make it part of a sound or just uh, do like um, on command beat looping that will match your tempo. Um, so anyway, uh, if you're interested in more on granular, let me know in the comments. If not, then hope you enjoyed this and hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.